Is Funtime Foxy here to play or here to slay? Welcome back, my fellow gamers. I'm your host, Amanda McKnight. It's that time once more to dive into the creepy, spooky world of horror that we call creepy pastas. Join me as we count down the top 10 scary Funtime Foxy creepy pastas and prepare to be scared. Let's get counting. Number 10, any price. Taylor had always loved Five Nights at Freddy's. They had all the games, their whole room was decorated in Five Nights at Freddy's merchandise from their bedspread to their dresser to their slippers, but one thing they were missing was a Funtime Foxy mask. Taylor had searched everywhere online to find one, but the only one he'd ever found got away from him. It was on eBay, and after a bidding war for it, he'd lost. In his rage, he'd managed to find out who got it and sent them an angry message, insisting he would have paid them any price for it. That night, he awoke to hear a loud thud coming from outside his bedroom door. Groggily, he assumed it was the dog and got up to go check. When he opened the door though, he saw an intruder in his home, wearing the Funtime Foxy mask. Any price, they asked him, brandishing a large kitchen knife. Number 9. Payback it couldn't be real. Funtime Foxy and the others had been locked away for so long. How could this be true? How could they be here? But the purple decaying body before him spoke with a collection of voices. Funtime Foxy is among them. You abandoned us, they said. And now, you will pay. And friends, if you are loving this list and you love creepypastas and you want some more creepypastas, be sure to let us know by giving this video a thumbs up. And share share your creepypastas in the comments below. I, I love reading creepypastas. They're, they're fantastic. It's such a fun exchange of creative writing. Number 8. Elizabeth's Friends Elizabeth loved to come to work with her dad. There were always so many fun new friends to meet. There was Funtime Freddy and Ballora, and today he was making someone new. After this new friend was made, he promised to make an animatronic just for her. She played in the metallic halls, each hop as she played with her skip ball reverberating off its walls. She started to sing a little song and was delighted when she heard Ballora's voice from her gallery join in. And then Freddy began to join in as well. From there, she heard a new voice. She continued to sing and followed it to her father's laboratory. There she saw a new friend, a pink and white fox. Meet Funtime Foxy, her father said. As Funtime Foxy blinked its eyes open for the first first time it smiled at her. She smiled back, then it looked at its surroundings, her father, and its expression changed. It seemed angry. You have imprisoned us, it said. It reached out and began to choke her father with its strong metal fingers. She watched as his body shook and spasmed. He was gesturing towards something. Elizabeth knew what, but she shook her head, her eyes wide. There was no other way though, she knew. She smashed the button on the podium with her fist. She was sad when Funtime Foxy collapsed to the ground, having been shocked. Somewhere inside her, she knew this was her legacy, and it made her scared. Number 7. All of us. Sophie had just graduated school and was looking for a summer job to occupy her and help her pay her living costs during her final summer before setting out to look for something in her field in the fall. As she scoured the wanted ad, she noticed a job looking for a nighttime security guard that appeared to be part of Fazbear Entertainment and involved work in an underground facility where animatronics were held. She immediately got excited and was even prepared to make sure she went and got all the prerequisites needed before applying. However, she was confused but happy to see that there were none. The ad read, no experience needed. She was the only applicant apparently, so Sophie ended up being hired. On the first day of her job, nothing much happened. On the second day, she noticed some of the animatronics holding areas had become open, but she managed to secure them again before the animatronics wandered off. On the third night, Funtime Foxy's holding area became unlocked, but when she went in to secure it and check in, Foxy was nowhere to be found. As she searched the room, she heard from above, this is for all of us. She looked up, but could only see darkness squinting in the dim lit room. She shined her flashlight up towards the ceiling but did not have time to do anything else as Mangle's face, dripping with blood, greeted her. The animatronic jumped down, mauling her. Number 6. They're here. 
Josh was young when he discovered Five Nights at Freddy's. At first it scared him, but eventually he came to love the franchise, even going so far as to draw his favorite characters. He tended to draw Funtime Foxy a lot, but every time he drew Funtime Foxy, his older sister noticed that it appeared as though the animatronic was getting closer and closer in each picture. One night his sister came home to find Josh frantically coloring a page of paper light pink with a line down the middle. Where's Foxy? She asked Josh, admiring his work. He looked up at her with tired eyes. He didn't say anything, but merely looked down at the page and pointed. That doesn't look like Funtime Foxy, his sister replied. Josh said one word, close. The lights went out. The room was pitch black. As both Josh and his sister scrambled to get to the lights, Josh reached out and felt a cold, metallic foot. Number 5. Perfect Match Funtime Foxy loomed over the body, looking down at it, hands still dripping with blood. Foxy turned off the recording system within, set it to rewind, and then hit replay. The sounds of screaming came from its voice box. Internally, Foxy pushed pause abruptly, and then tested out this newly saved voice for itself. Hello, it's me, Jim, they said. The voice they spoke with was a perfect match for their victims. Number 4. I See You Funtime Foxy has always been my favorite animatronic from Freddy's, so I was very excited when I was at the store with my mom and I saw a new toy on the shelf that was Funtime Foxy themed that I had never seen before. It was almost retro in terms of its appearance, and yet the make and packaging made it look brand new. It was one of those toys that you'd pull the string on and it would launch the figure up into the air. In this case, Funtime Foxy or as it said on the box, your pal flying Funtime Foxy. I begged my mom to get it, and because I had recently done well on a test at school, she got it for me. At home, I quickly unpackaged it and took it to my room to play with. Nervously, I held the end of the ripcord, pulling gently towards myself and launching it into the sky. However, once it was up there, it continued to spin with its arms outstretched, not seeming to want to come down. I chased it around my room, calling its name, but it always managed to dart just out of my reach. I see you, it said, smiling down at me, before flying out of the window. I was sad and confused for a moment, until from the other room, I heard my mom scream. Number 3. Welcome to the party! I had always wanted to go to Freddy Fazbear's Pizzeria, and now my dreams were finally coming true. It was my birthday, and Freddy's also happened to be celebrating its anniversary on the same day, with an unveiling of a new animatronic. Halfway through my birthday, we made our way to the stage for the unveiling. There was a giant pink sheet under the bright spotlight, and Freddy came on. He swiftly pulled it off to reveal an animatronic that he said was called Funtime Foxy. Everyone say hi to my new friend. And Funtime Foxy, Freddy chortled. We all smiled and shouted back, Hi, Funtime Foxy! But then, something went wrong. Funtime Foxy's eyes turned from orange to red, and their face plates moved back to reveal sharp teeth. Everyone screamed and began to run, but I got knocked backwards. By the time I managed to get back up, Funtime Foxy had found their way to me, holding a cake knife in one hand. Welcome to the party, they said, raising the knife. Number 2. The Daring Escape I had never been so scared in my life. I couldn't breathe. The sweat dripped from my brow, and I peered around the corner. I could just make out a flash of white before I pulled my head back behind the dismantled heap of animatronics. They saw me. They had to have seen me. I heard the heavy thud of their feet as they walked around the room searching for me. It was now or never. I thought. If I didn't do something soon, they definitely would find me and then I'd be scooped. I had to make it to the safe house. I couldn't let any of them find me. I breathed in as deeply and quietly as I could before bolting out from behind the heap. What I hadn't realized was that my foot was actually caught in a wire. That fleeting moment of freedom flashed by me as I tripped and smacked my head off the floor. The pile of parts crashing down on top of me, spilling out around me. Funtime Foxy's eyes locked with mine. They had me now. Number 1. Fake Foxy For my birthday, my dad gave me a surprise, but he said I had to wait for all my guests to arrive before I could receive it. Once all my guests had arrived, a short time passed before the doorbell rang. It must be our pizza, I thought, and I ran to answer it. I swung the door wide open, and standing in front of me was a massive animatronic, who I knew as Funtime Foxy. Their head tilted from side to side as they looked me up and down. I became extremely uncomfortable as it felt like their eyes were laser focused. Focus to me. 
Soon my dad came up behind me and greeted the animatronic. Apparently it was just a hired performer. At least that's how we talked to them. However, when Foxy came inside from their movements and the clunk of their heavy feet, they didn't sound human to me. They seemed like a real animatronic. The party was awesome, and I slowly started to become more comfortable around Funtime Foxy, even enjoying the presence of my favorite fake animatronic for the day. However, at the end of the party, when Brad's mom came to pick him up, we couldn't find him anywhere. We also couldn't find Foxy, who had apparently left without saying goodbye or without getting paid, according to my dad. All we did find was a bit of blood on the backyard fence. What FNAF creepypasta is your favorite? Which animatronic from FNAF do you find the most scary? What kind of themed creepypastas would you like to see us do next on the channel? Let us know in the comments below. This has been Top 10 Gaming, and I am your host, Amanda McKnight, reminding you, as always, to keep on gaming on. Pew pew!